Our next presenter, Sarah Sakbesan. She's a traditional artist from Lewiston. Sarah creates handcrafted authentic Penobscot ash baskets made from the finest quality brown ash and sweet grass and woven with traditional Maine love and techniques. She is a third generation participant in the Maine Arts Commission Traditional Arts Apprenticeship Program, having apprenticed with Jennifer Neptune in 2004. Sarah. Sweetgrass basket maker from the Penobscot Tribe, and I've been weaving for about 12 years now, getting my start with the Maine Arts Commission's Traditional Arts Apprenticeship Program. And for me, art is something that I apply to everything that I do as a person, and honestly, there's nothing I'd rather do than create. Uh, growing up, these are a few examples of the styles of baskets I was exposed to, and I can always remember being fascinated and feeling a strong draw to them. And I've also been told that I come from a long line of weavers, but unfortunately, the tradition wasn't passed down to me. So uh, this is my grandmother and me. Uh, my great-grandmother, uh, she is on the left. Uh, she was a basket maker, but her daughter didn't have interest in learning, so consequently, it was passed down to my generation. Uh, so after high school, I was living on Indian Island and I sought out the information on my own. And I was lucky enough to have met a great teacher, Jennifer Neptune, who was willing to share her knowledge with me. And this is Jennifer and Teresa, who actually taught Jennifer. And this kind of shows the process of harvesting uh, a brown ash tree which has to be pounded continuously until the growth rings separate, and then each split, splint gets uh, split several times. So one of the first things I learned was how to prepare my own material, and this is a very time-consuming and labor-intensive process, but it's probably the most important aspect that someone has to master. And I think also that uh, there's many different uh, reasons why um, weavers weren't carrying on this tradition, and I think preparing the materials is one of them. Uh, this is me picking sweet grass, uh, another item that I uh, harvest, and this location has been passed down from generation to generation, and usually I'll harvest once a year, and what I harvest will last the entire year. So what's been especially rewarding is gathering all these materials, one of which starts as a large tree, and seeing it become transformed into small, intricately woven pieces of art. So as soon as I started working with brown ash, I really found it to be a very special material. It has qualities like no other wood that I've ever worked with, and there are so many things you can do with it. Uh, now we face a new kind of threat. This is the emerald ash borer beetle and it's an invasive species which lays their eggs in ash trees and the eggs hatch, the larvae feed on the wood, destroying it, and already tens of millions of ash trees in the Midwest and Canada have been decimated. So unfortunately, we fear that it may only be a time, a matter of time before it gets to Maine. Um, this is a serious threat to our livelihood, um, our art form, and our culture. Um, so. The more people get educated, hopefully we can try to stem off the movement of the beetle. So, uh, the one side effect of this beetle for me has been it really transformed the way I think about creating my baskets. Uh, this is a piece uh, where I've utilized other materials and adding cedar and birch bark. Uh, historically, as Native people, I think we have a long history of being resourceful and utilizing materials uh, in creative ways. And I think that our tradition continues to evolve and change with the times as we market our work to current audiences and uh, acclimate to the environmental changes. Uh, so I was a painter before I started working with ash and sweetgrass, and so color has always been something that I like to use in my work and I like to use bold, modern colors uh, 
And I, I think there's something really special about uh, the contrast between old and new, contemporary and traditional, and natural with unnatural colors. So for a while I had been wanting to utilize my painting experience and combine it with my baskets, and this is a product of that experiment. <laughs> so I painted on birch bark, and specifically I chose a main landscape scene so I could coordinate the paint colors with the basket. Uh, this piece is, I used actual corn husks in to make the corn basket look more realistic. And I think with all the materials we have available today, both modern and traditional, I really look forward to investigating uh, the possibilities. So this uh, kind of textural design is what I call a diamond weave, and it's probably one of the hardest patterns that I do. It's very tedious. Uh, but it was inspired by an old leaf, and it was actually a ribbon curl, and it kind of gives this piece an updated kind of modern look, but the actual methods are based on tradition. Uh, this, uh, I think this tradition has been evolving for hundreds of years, so um, I think it will continue to evolve, and uh, these are a few examples of the material that I'm eager to experiment with. Um, birch bark, cedar, and spruce root. And so, I really aspire to create things that are visually appealing and a reflection of myself, but also really strive to preserve the Abenaki basketry to ensure that it's not lost or forgot forgotten. And I really see it as part of my duty to pass this knowledge on, and it's personally important to me, to me to create art that will really inspire the future generations and keep the tradition alive. Uh, my hope is that future generations will have the opportunity to practice this art form and make a living doing something that they love, as I have. And I think there is something profoundly satisfying uh, to perform a tradition that has been passed down from generation to generation and it's really a true testament to the weavers uh, that have come before me passing on these important aspects of our culture in the face of adversity is a very big deal and for this art form to have relevance in a modern day context is even more spectacular.